Time Nate Eaton live on Broad Street where hundreds of people have li just left the John Marshall Courthouse. They are marching somewhere. We don't know where. They suddenly left the John Marshall Courthouse building where they were demonstrating earlier today on behalf of Michael Brown. And now they have come onto Broad Street. Obviously, Broad Street is closed right now. These people are holding signs. They're chanting, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace as they march, uh, presumably down Broad Street. Now we have police officers, Tony, pan over to the sidewalk on motorcycles. They brought an extra security down here. And there are probably four to 500 people marching down Broad Street. We're going to have a lot more straight ahead on 8 News at 530. How can you let them use the bathroom that's running on the sidewalk? That's nasty. Human waste leaping, leaking out of a house onto city streets and sidewalks. A Richmond mother says that is just one of the problems she is facing with her rental home. Now she contacted us saying no one else cares about the hazards that she and her children face every day. All right, new senior reporter Nate Eaton is live at that home. He went looking for answers tonight. Nate? Yeah, Christina, we're here at 1800 Boston Avenue. This is the home we're talking about. When the family moved in three months ago, they had no idea there'd be so many problems. A warning for you tonight. Some of the images you're about to see are disgusting. I say you using the bathroom and it's going straight on the floor? Come on now, that don't make no sense. Lolita Bossa can't believe her neighbor, Cherry Ann Figaro, has human waste running from her home. You flush it, you use it, you come outside, you see all the tissue and all the human waste coming from under the house and it's running into the road. Cherry Ann took these photos and says this is just one problem she and her five kids have had since they moved here in August. Front door fell off. The front door just fell off. The front door, the hole, all the screws, everything fell off. Not only that, but bathroom drains upstairs are clogged and water's been sitting in this tub for months. Then there's the front porch with rotted wood beams holding the roof up. When you move that, that porch is going to fall in. Yeah. This is how this porch has been ever since I moved here. If anyone in the house wants to use the one working bathroom, they have to physically move this heavy door in front of the room. That's because it fell a few weeks ago, almost hitting one of the kids. You pay rent? Yes, I do. Never missed a month? Never miss a month. Cherry Ann says she's called the property manager and sent this letter two weeks ago. I have never heard nothing back from them up to this blessed day. So I gave them a call. It's Nate Eaton with Channel 8 News. The man on the phone told me he couldn't help me but would call me back. Cherry Ann hopes to hear from him too. Tell me if they will let allow their family to live like this. Either find her somewhere to go or come here and fix what need to be fixed. Now back out here live, one of the posts on the front porch rotting away. Now, Sherry Ann tells me that late tonight, a worker from the property management company came out here and took a look at the plumbing underneath the house, and she's hoping that that'll be fixed. We still have not heard back from that company requesting a comment, and now the city of Richmond says that they will send out an inspector tomorrow to check on these problems. Reporting live in Richmond tonight, I'm Nate Eaton, 8 News. And it is a story that everybody's talking about tonight. Human waste pouring out of a Richmond home onto the streets and sidewalks. 8 News first exposed a story last night here at 11. We're learning new information tonight that has many folks furious. All right, news reporter Nate Eaton is in our newsroom now with the very latest. Nate? Well, Christina, tonight the sewage problem is fixed, but there are other issues at the Boston Avenue home. And just this afternoon, the mother of five living there received a letter telling her to pay up or get out. Yes, yeah, slumlords. That's how Cherry Ann Figaro describes the property manager of her rental house. They come down this way here. Last night, we showed you human waste spilling from the home onto the sidewalk and street. Within hours of our report, the problem was fixed. Why do you think they came out this morning and fixed it? Because you're, you are on my side, and I appreciate Channel 840. But Cherry Ann's front and bathroom doors are still off their frames, and wooden posts holding the front porch roof up are rotting. Fed up, Cherry Ann sent a letter to the property manager. And look, the company stamped received on October 27th. You sent that to him saying you weren't going to be paying rent until these were fixed. Right. And then you got this. And then I got this. This being a notice for Cherry Ann to pay November rent plus a late fee or leave the property within five days. And you said you called them after you got this letter today? Uh, nobody answered the phone. 
Nobody answered the phone. So I reached out to Whittle and Roper Realtors. In an email, the property manager said, We do not comment on specific tenants and their situations. As always, when we receive a maintenance request, it is addressed in a timely manner and in accordance with the applicable laws and codes. If Miss Figaro received a pay or quit letter, it was an error. I'm just not going to sit back and let him walk on top of me and my kids. I just hope that I, uh, me and my kids could have somewhere proper and decent to live. That's all. And city inspectors went by this morning. I'm told a violation notice is on the way to the property management company and that inspectors will follow up next week to see if repairs are made. Live in the newsroom, I'm Nate Eaton, 8 News. Juan and Christina, even though he will no longer be House Majority Leader, Congressman Eric Cantor says he will remain in his congressional seat until the end of his term. Still, in about seven weeks, on July 31st, Cantor will step down from one of the most powerful U.S. political positions in the country. Now, Cantor says the decision to do so came with, quote, great humility. And while he won't be on the ballot in November, Cantor says he will be a champion for conservatives all across the nation. All of this coming tonight after yesterday's stunning election where Tea Party backed Dave Bratt beat Cantor for Virginia's seventh congressional seat by about 11 percent. Now, tonight, Cantor won't comment on what he thought happened yesterday, just what went wrong saying he'll leave that to the analysts, but he is saying that he's remaining optimistic for the future. You know, growing up uh, in the Jewish faith, um, you know, I grew up, went to Hebrew school, read a lot in the Old Testament, and you learn a lot about individual setbacks. But you also read and you learn that each setback is an opportunity and that there's always optimism for the future. And while I may have had a, suffered a personal setback last night, I couldn't be more optimistic about the future of this country. Now, Cantor is the only Jew serving in the U.S. House of Representatives, and tonight he says he supports House Majority Whip Kevin McCarthy and fully endorses him to become the next House Majority Leader. But tonight, House Republican leadership are scrambling to figure out who will fill that position. We're told that on June 20th, there will be a meeting will, where that may be decided. Of course, that decision will need to be made before Cantor steps down on July 31st. Interesting fact here in D.C., people from all over the world coming up to was saying they'd never even heard of Eric Cantor until this morning when the news came out and it's on the cover of every newspaper. Many reading and researching this saying that they're stunned by what happened yesterday. We'll have much more tonight on 8 News at 11 from the Capitol. For now, reporting live in Washington, D.C., I'm Nate Eaton, 8 News. Christina, a grand jury handed down those indictments earlier this afternoon here at the Henrico County Courthouse. I hold them right here. Indecent liberties one charge contributing to the delinquency of a minor electronic solicitation of a minor, distributing child pornography, and possessing child pornography. Details included in these documents go on to expose what has gone on allegedly over the past few weeks, including Delegate Morrissey accused of having an inappropriate relationship, consensual sex at his law office with a 17-year-old multiple times back in August. These documents say both he and the teenager texted other people confirming the sexual encounter and the next day according to these papers Morrissey asked the girl to send him a naked picture so he could fantasize about them and about their next encounter prosecutors say she did send Morrissey the picture then he's accused of sending it to a friend police say they have recovered those messages now the court papers go on to detail that even after the girl stopped working for Morrissey he allowed her to use his company car and then even helped her to buy a car these documents say that the two spent the night together in Norfolk back in October, and they've been seen together out socially as early or as lately as last month in the month of May. Now, all of this came to light back in August when this 17-year-old girl's dad called Henrico police around midnight and said that her daughter, his daughter wasn't home. Police went over to Morrissey's house and she was there. All along, Morrissey has said that this was nothing more than a work relationship. He says that he has done nothing wrong, but this afternoon a grand jury found differently. Now we have team coverage on our story tonight. Abajoy Burnett is in the studio with more. Abajoy.